Hey guys, and thank you for listening to the Campus Safety Voices podcast. My name is Amy Rock and I am Senior Editor for Campus Safety. Each year, Campus Safety has a Director of the Year Awards program that recognizes K-12, higher ed, and hospital police chiefs, security directors, emergency managers, or heads of security and or public safety who demonstrate outstanding leadership skills, ingenuity, and selflessness. We name a winner from each sector at one of our Campus Safety conferences. The nomination materials we receive for each finalist are chock full of notable accomplishments. To give the finalists more deserved recognition, we like to chat with them further to highlight a few of their most impressive accomplishments or achievements they are especially proud of. One of the K-12 finalists is Alan Kane, who is Director of Safety and Security for Gilbert Public Schools in Arizona. Alan touched on how he partnered with the Operations Department to construct secured entryways at six district schools, how he built a team to review applicants who responded to a district-wide RFP for a new camera system, and advice he has for other schools or districts looking to undertake similar security projects. Take a listen. Be sure to subscribe to Campus Safety's YouTube channel and like or leave a comment on our videos, or subscribe to our Campus Safety Voices podcast on Apple and Spotify and leave a review. You are currently Director of Safety and Security for Gilbert Public Schools in Arizona, but let's uh, start off with a little on your background and also uh, some changes you quickly realized had to be made when you first took on your current role. Absolutely. So I was a, uh, uh, my first career, my first real career, of course I had, you know, hot dog and hamburger jobs and, you know, gas station jobs when I was a kid, but my my first real job, out of college was a Chicago policeman. I was a Chicago policeman for uh, 24 years, retired as a sergeant. And then uh, my wife and I both moved from Chicago, south side of Chicago to Gilbert, Arizona. My first job upon Ari- moving to Arizona, I was the uh, operations manager of security for Edward Jones Financial. Um, enjoyed it just kind of figured out corporate America was not where I wanted to be. So I went and got my police certificate, uh, lateral transfer police certification here in Arizona. I became a policeman for the city of Maricopa, uh, stayed there for a while, ended up leaving there. And I went to Grand Canyon University. I was actually one of the first two policemen hired there and one of the first sergeants that were promoted there. Um, it, again, enjoyed the job. Uh, it was a little, far of a drive for me from Gilbert here. So I, you know, I started looking for what other options were out there and I became a policeman with the Maricopa Community College Police Department. Enjoyed the job, uh, uh, was working well for me. And then my wife, who's actually a teacher here in Gilbert Public Schools said they were looking for a security director, a, a brand new position for the school district. And I'm gonna just gonna assume that you know, they saw the writing on the wall, they being Gilbert schools and, you know, the the bad things that were happening across the country, you know, in regards to school safety and, it, you know, I hate to say it, but school shootings and such. And they realized it was time and there was a need for that position here in Gilbert Public Schools. So I in turn applied for it and lo and behold, I got the job and here I am. And I've been here uh, in this role for going on four years pretty amazing when you think of when I was, I'm, I'm in my thirties. And so when I was in school, the, the extent of school police was like a dare officer. And it's, it's unfortunate that this, this need has developed to have it, but, and then it also makes schools safer in other ways, not just from, you know, people wanting to do bad things. It's just also creating a community between police and also um, students, just something that oh, absolutely. a lot of students didn't have those interactions prior to these departments. Absolutely. It definitely bridges that relationship for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I agree with you wholeheartedly, Amy. Uh, You know, when I went to high school and I, and I went to an all boys Catholic high school and we, our doors were open. We had very little fencing. We had no secured entryways. We had no policemen on campus. We had the brothers that would (laughs) give you a crack if you needed it. But outside of that, we had, we, we had no like official security or law enforcement. Yeah. 
It just, you know, it just, and that was in the mid to late eighties and there just wasn't a need for it. And in your submissions for director of the year for campus safety from colleagues, I see that you partnered with your operations department to construct secure entryways. Speaking of now that we had talked about them before at all five traditional high schools and one elementary school. And prior to this, what were some of the issues with the old entryways? Well, that was a good segue from your yeah. comment into that, wasn't it? <laughs> very good, well. very good. So, uh, and I agree with you uh, wholeheartedly. And when I first started, I felt the same way. Um, you know, and I, and I asked my supervisor, I said, you know, give me a couple weeks to kind of do my own reconnaissance, if you will, my own investigating to kind of see where we as a school district were presently at. And I quickly learned we had very minimal security systems or procedures or, uh, you know, uh, entryways and such. Uh, so you're asking about those entryways. Well, visitors could essentially visit our campus and walk directly into the general school population with, without any barriers. Now, of course, all of our schools had a you know, an attendance clerk or a registration person sitting at the front desk, but we all know how busy they get. Um, phone calls, people stopping by, emails. It, it, it's not unheard of for them to be so involved in what they're doing that a person, they could miss a person walking right past them. So that's where we were at. That's exactly where we're at. Um, and even if they did stop the individual, we had no means to um, you know, vet them into the building, you know, okay, I got Mr. Smith, but do you really know who Mr. Smith is? And we had no way to record or maintain a vlog who was in the building outside of the old, you know, pen and paper method. So those were some of the things that I saw that we desperately needed. And to go off of that, what were some changes or improvements that were made to address those issues? So as you, uh, it just stated, I, I partnered with our operations director uh, and, you know, he's in charge of all of our sites and he has the contacts and connections with, uh, you know, all like the construction companies in the local area and such. So we partnered together, got designs drawn up and we, we our plan was to start with the high schools and work our way down because, you know, statistically speaking, if you look at uh, you know, the bad incidents at our schools across the country, statistically, they're in high schools and then they trickle down to junior highs and down to elementary. And that's it, it, just the way it, it appears to have happened. Um, so we, we got these secured entryways developed, um, included in them were, um, they were storefronts we had built. I, I'll call them a storefront, including glass and, we, we didn't want an institutionalized look, but a welcoming environment. So we, we had to kind of balance, you know, the security, but the welcoming aspects. And, and that's tough to do. Um, so one thing we did was we had a, what I called a storefront put in, which glass, the glass was reinforced with bullet resistant film. We also had, had a lot of the glass or the front entryways branded to match the school logo or the school name. And so that way it was, you couldn't see in it, but you could see through it looking out. So that helped with some of the security. Um, in the storefronts, we had very small pass-throughs for paper so that uh, a weapon could not be stuck through the, you know, through the, the, through the glass essentially. We installed very professional communication devices so that the visitor to the campus could speak with the uh, receptionist, you know, clearly. That was a that was a challenge in itself. We also included a visitor's management system, that being Raptor, which so they could that we we have them where they a visitor has to present their identification. They're ran against the National Sex Offender Database, and provided they clear that. They're then issued a sticker with their photo on it, their name on it, and their destination on it, and the time. And then, then we also included buzzer doors, which uh, they would have to be buzzed in to get into the general population of the school. That 
Raptor VMS also allowed us the capability to keep a digital track of who was on our campus at any given time, which helped us with creating reports, you know, in the future regarding visitors. Um, we, with the buzzer also, we installed a card access system. So our staff had the ability to swipe in and out of our, of our front lobby. Um, what else did we do? We, we installed a dedicated camera in the lobby, which fed to a, a large monitor that was in the lobby area. And the philosophy behind that was somebody walking in and seeing themselves on a monitor, knowing they're being recorded, was far less likely to, to do something negative or negative behavior than if they weren't. And I know a lot of businesses, you know, major department stores have a similar type system. So those were really the big upgrades to our front lobbies. And as I said, we've done all, all of our traditional high schools. We have two of our non-traditional high schools that we plan on doing over this summer. And then one of our elementaries was already done. And that was solely because we had a large construction project going on at that school at the time. We just figured, why not do it all at the same time? Right, right. And I mean, thank God for these tech, uh, technical advancements, because like you said, trying to find the balance between being safe, but also feeling welcoming would be a lot more difficult without these systems in place. Like if someone has to wait for 10 minutes to be vetted to come in, they're not going to feel like they're welcomed, even if there's someone that's supposed to be there. And so systems like that just make it a lot quicker and you don't feel like an intruder, even if you're not one. Absolutely. And, and this system we use, you can literally, from the time you receive the ID from the visitor to the campus, we can vet them in 30 seconds. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's key. And now you also built a team uh, to review applicants who responded to a district-wide RFP for a new camera system. And can you right. talk about that process and how did you decide who to involve on that team? Sure. Um, we built a team primarily of our Gilbert Public School staff, but we also included other stakeholders that had a vested interest in, in this new infrastructure. Uh, and that would be myself, we included the school resource officers, uh, 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 I'm sorry, let me digress. I included myself, a school resource, re, school resource officer, uh, several members of our technology team, because, you know, these cameras are very tech driven, you know, the, connecting to the network and such. We included uh, principals and uh, several members from our business office, okay. you know, finance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so you need to involve everyone in that type right. of project, really. Absolutely. And what type of capabilities were you looking for when you put out the RFP? What type of capabilities were you looking for uh, when choosing a vendor? Let me go back a little bit. Uh, when I started, we had cameras. And, and I, I say that loosely because we, we really didn't have them in our elementary. Our high schools and junior highs had a some form of camera system. And when I say that, um, I'll date myself, but some of our schools had cameras like from Radio Shack. And, you know, some had some from Costco, some from Best Buy. So basically, we had a hodgepodge of camera systems that not, could not be controlled from one enterprise software. It was just, it, and it just, it was too cumbersome to use. Because so quite honestly, when schools would call me about cameras being down or, or how to use them, I, I didn't even concern myself with them because there was such a wide variety in usage. But I, but I knew right from day one that we needed some enterprise system district-wide, one system to benefit us district-wide. And in my vision was also so that we could monitor it from a central location. So what we did was we, um, we met with the company that eventually won the bid and you know we we went over all we wanted and we we selected that the camera system we selected was a, a vigilant camera system and we built a SOC or security operations center here it's right right in my office and every one of our cameras when you know when this project is completed will feed to that room and each campus will have the ability to view their own cameras but but all the rest will feed to the, our SOC right here and we're also going to have it where our cameras also feed to the respective police department for that campus. 
So all of our schools, so we have some schools that fall within the town limits of Gilbert and some of them fall within the city of Mesa. So those will be sent, will have the sharing capability with Mesa PD and, and then the other ones will be sent to Gilbert PD. So yes, for some of the capabilities, well, we wanted uh, advanced analytics. We wanted to be able to do uh, person and property searches. We want, you know, we want to, you want to be able to know if somebody asks you, well, where did this kid go? Or where, where, you know, this, this item, this book or this computer was here, and now it's gone. Well, in the past, again, I said, I didn't have a lot of dealings with the old camera systems, but I would occasionally, when somebody requested, I, I would do the best I could. And I would actually have to sit down and watch video live. So imagine you say, I had a computer here. I know it was here on Friday. It's now Monday morning and it's not here. I mean, I would have to watch that video basically live from Friday to Monday to see where that computer went. Of course, I could fast forward it to some extent, hope I don't miss it. But now with the new technology, I can put a box around that device and it, I can, within 30 seconds, I can tell you the sec to the second when that device moved or when that product that was in that box moved. So those are analytics that were, I mean, totally we knew we needed. Uh, we also wanted, uh, it's not necessarily a capability, but we wanted a, a long-term service plan. We wanted the company that won the bid to be able to come in and service these if there's, if the camera, I mean, technology is great as long as it's working, right? <laughs> but sometimes the cameras, you know, they malfunction, they, they break, uh, especially here in Arizona, you know, the, it's the ones on the exterior are in some extreme heat. So we, we realized that, you know, you're gonna have these malfunction so we built we want definitely wanted uh, and we did we got a five-year service plan so anything breaks it's covered anything that, that and included in our service plan is even cleaning they, they come out twice a year and clean all the cameras so that we you know we have a fresh view from them yeah. um and I, I would say the biggest capability from you know, you know, I mean, I'm somewhat techie, but I'm not, I, you know, I don't work for the tech department. The biggest capability, in my opinion, was ease of use. Because the system, if, if people, the end user, don't know how to use it, it's useless. You have the best technology in the world. If you don't know how to use it, it's, it, you know, it's useless. So the system we chose, I believe, is super user friendly. I actually do the trainings for our, as we progress to the new schools with the installation of our camera system. I do the training for the administrators and the security staff. And I could, I mean, Amy, I could train you on our camera system, total end user in about 45 minutes. So, I mean, that to me was a very, you know, big part of the camera system. Well, and you figure in schools too, there's such a wide range of age when it comes to teachers and admins, it needs to be able to be simple for people no matter what decade they were born in or how much technology they grew up in, uh, just an easy learning curve. And it sounds like it has that. Yeah, absolutely. And for campuses or districts, they're obviously always updating or changing their camera system. So for a campus or a district that might be considering a similar video surveillance project to what you're doing now, what are some piece of, pieces of advice you would offer to them? Well, I, I, I... I think the first thing would be your integrator, the, the one, the company you're going to hire to do this for you, find one that you can work well with and that you've built, uh, that you, that you believe you can build a relationship with. Cause I think that's imperative. Uh, you know, cause I use a lot of systems in my, in my job. And if you have an integrator that you you know, you just have a, I don't want to say a bad relationship with, but a tough time working with that, that's going to, it's going to slow down progress. And it's just, it's not the best. So yeah, so that's number one. Work, find somebody that you can really work with. Um, you know, it, lo preferably local because, you know, if, if I'm working with a company and they're on the East Coast, you know, I've got to wait for, just like you and I, I got to wait for the time to be right. And, you know, and then there's the communication. They, they got to call somebody else. Whereas local, they can drive to me in 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you know, so that's very important. And as far as the equipment, it's, know what functions you're looking for, you know, know what, uh, what, what it is you're looking for when you go into it. Um, 
and, and quite honestly, I didn't know everything, but I did my research. I, you know, I, did, I believe I did my due diligence. I knew, so going into the RFP, I kind of had an idea of what technology was out there. Uh, and I didn't put it all down because I wanted people to tell me what they were going to offer and what they could give. Um, the next thing is, I guess, know how much you want covered, uh, you know, in reference to the cameras. I mean, I'm not putting a camera every 10 feet. I know what it is I want covered. And in, in my example, I wanted 100% coverage on the exterior of our buildings, uh, both for during the day and our perimeter protection at night, you know, security for our schools at night. And then on the inside, um, they're not every single area is not covered, but you can't get to any area in my school, those schools that are already have the cameras completed, you can't get to any area without passing through one that's already covered by a camera. So although I don't have cameras in every single location, you can't get there without going passing through one of the cameras. And then I'll go back, uh, that ease of use is uh, so important. You know, it has, you have to have something that's user friendly. Back to what you were saying at the beginning of our conversation, that must have been a, a bit of an adjustment going from being a Chicago police officer to being in schools, because I feel like it's the same concept, but a totally different ballgame in a lot of ways. It is. Uh, you know, as a policeman, you're, you're a good portion of your job is reactive. You know, you, mm -hmm. citizen needs the police, they call them, we respond. Now, more of my job is proactive. Um, I'm you know, I'm doing, I'm taking measures and steps to make sure that the bad things don't happen. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, you know, I'm trying to be far more proactive than reactive. Yeah. And I feel like you, your progression in your career probably helped too, because you went from being a police officer to being on a, you said a college campus, right? Uh, well, yeah, my, my first two jobs on the college campus. Absolutely. Yeah. A little bit yeah. more comparable. Yeah. <laughs> And I did, and and I I didn't I was never a school resource officer in Chicago, but I was a sergeant, and I and I so I worked with a lot of them, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I, I so I understood their mentality, and I kind of look at it as an SRO as yes, you're the police, but at the same time, you're a mentor to these young young kids, mm -hmm. and you know hopefully I mean in society we all see the negativity on on the news and stuff, and hopefully they build that those relationships with these students and you know, because they're humans too.